In this Wrestle Talk news, Vince McMahon's return to WWE could be short-lived, an update on WWE's plans to sell, Shawn Michaels breaks his silence on Mandy Rose, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk. When it was reported Vince McMahon had forced his way back, sorry, I mean, when Vince McMahon was legitimately voted back in as executive chairman of WWE last month, a lot of the immediate reaction from fans was to feel sorry for Triple H, who took over WWE's creative team when Vince announced his retirement in July last year. But don't worry, because it turns out Triple H loves having his father-in-law back in the company. And the quote you're about to hear is definitely not influenced by the fact that Vince is the majority shareholder of WWE. During yesterday's WWE earnings call, Triple H spoke about a number of things, but wanted everyone to know just how much he loves Vince. He said, I also want to add, having Vince around has been great. Having him back and involved at even at just the board level comes with his incredible insight. Spoken truly like a man with a giant Vince McMahon shaped gun at the back of his head. Just a reminder in case you needed it, Vince remains under investigation for his alleged sexual misconduct, with new reports suggesting WWE is facing a horrifying new lawsuit in relation to their beloved chairman, who allegedly paid over $15 million in hush money to women he allegedly sexually assaulted in the 1980s. But if you're not a fan of Vince, well, perhaps some good news for you, because according to WWE CEO Nick Khan, who also spoke during yesterday's earnings call, Vince will step down from his role as executive chairman following a WWE WWE sale should it benefit the company's shareholders. When asked whether Vince would step down after a sale, Khan said, yes, without question. He's declared it to the board, he's declared it to us in management, it's all about shareholder value. Obviously, he is a shareholder, so it's not about what role he'll have, it's about maximizing that value opportunity. He really did his best to reassure everyone that Vince really does have the company's best interests at heart by adding, he's a partner that has more than simply deep pockets, so he's a partner that understands the media business that's in the media business that understands how to further monetize the media business. Also, he's a partner that certainly understands our product, our intellectual property, what we're doing with it, what can be done with it, media rights, both domestically and internationally. We see the international growth opportunity is huge. And it seems there's going to be a lot of opportunity for W shareholders this year because WWE has once again recorded record profits. I sure hope you like big numbers because you're about to hear one. WWE has announced record profits for the 2022 financial year, with the company announcing $1.3 billion in revenue, the highest in the company's history, and an increase of 18% from 2021. According to the earnings report, a large part of this increased revenue came from WWE returning to a full live event schedule, something the company hadn't been able to do for two years due to the coronavirus pandemic. Also to thank was WWE's trips aboard, with the report specifically mentioning Clash at the Castle, which was held in the UK in September last year. There are a hell of a lot more big numbers in the full financial report, which you can read via the link in the description below. It is interesting that there is no mention of all the, uh, the budget cuts the company's made over the past year in this uh, earnings report. It's pretty safe to say that after a pretty horrific Royal Rumble event in 2022, WWE bounced right back with this year's edition, delivering a pretty great pair of Rumble matches, excellent winners, and of course, maybe the best WWE pay-per-view conclusion in recent memory. The stark shift in quality in just a year is pretty jarring, considering it's the same company and many of the same talent from the year prior. However, as we know, there was one pretty significant change from 2022 to 2023. There was no Shane McMahon there to cock everything up. Oh, and his dad wasn't there either. I guess that's uh, I guess that's pretty important. Yes, while 2022's Rumble was pretty notoriously an absolute nightmare behind the scenes, with many of Vince's trademark last-minute script changes, and of course the whole Shane O'Mac situation, this year's event was pretty much the opposite across the board, according to Fightful Select. An anonymous member of WWE's talent roster told Fightful that the process of the Rumble itself was the easiest in a long time without Vince McMahon at the helm, and there were way less last-minute changes, with the same talent adding that this year's Rumble was a dream compared to last year's nightmare. As well, as the Rumble event itself running a lot more smoothly, another WWE source told Fightful that things are overall just much more laid back at shows under the Triple H regime. But what about NXT? Has Vince secretly been laying low in Florida? I mean, 
They do have a guy called Script down there, and we all know how much Vince loves those. Well, no, thankfully he has not. According to Shawn Michaels himself speaking at the NXT Vengeance Day media call, he said Vince has probably got bigger fish to fry than us down here in NXT. HBK did, however, give thanks to Vince for his help in building his version of NXT, and later heaped the same praise on his best pal Triple H, saying, Vince was very good with us down here. They helped us in a certain way. They guided us on how they wanted it to go. But after that, it was hands off and Hunter, the same thing. They understand this is a different environment down here, so we're very fortunate to kind of be independent no matter who is running the ship up there in Stamford. While NXT can occasionally fly under the radar, one piece of NXT news that garnered its fair share of media attention was the shock dismissal of former NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose back on December 14th, after Rose released some pretty explicit content on her fan time page. Speaking on the decision, HBK made it clear that he had no final say on the decision to let Rose go, saying, I didn't fire her, I can't fire anybody. Only thing correct about any of that was I handled creative. HBK called the whole situation unfortunate, but did take time to heap praise on Rose and her time in NXT. However, he did say that while her release did speed up creative plans, Roxanne Perez was always planned to become the next NXT Women's Champion regardless. Moving on to another NXT alumni now, and the IC champ Gunther has become one of the most dominant forces WWE has seen in quite some time, and is clearly a favorite of Triple H. Perhaps no greater evidence of this being his record record-breaking performance in last week's Men's Royal Rumble match, where he lasted an hour and 11 minutes. So yeah, safe to say Trips has some pretty big plans for the Austrian coming up to Mania. And now we can reveal what those plans might be. And hold on to your hats, boys and girls, because this one is a doozy. According to WrestleVotes, WWE's plans for the IC title involve a triple threat match between Gunther and the Banger Bros themselves, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Oh my. My chest just feels a bit sore thinking about that one. Not only that, but according to WrestleVotes, those that are pushing for the match within Creative are also pushing for it to take place at the top of the card. And quite simply, why wouldn't you want that? Okay, so not long ago I was heaping praise on everything great that happened at this year's Royal Rumble. But of course, it wasn't all good in the hood as we know. Yes, and that's pretty much solely down to the glow-in-the-dark birthday party match between Bray Wyatt and LA Knight. While it had some cool looking visuals, it was a bit of a mess, especially that Uncle Howdy spot at the end. So let's just all agree that we shouldn't do it again, right, WWE? Oh, you've got something even better planned for WrestleMania involving breakfast cereal. Oh yes, if you thought the Mountain Dew partnership was egregious, just you wait, as according to WWE Senior VP and Head of Sales Partnerships, Craig Stimmel, who spoke to The Hollywood Reporter, we may have an even better match coming involving none other than everyone's favorite cinnamon-based cereal, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. While Stimmel didn't outright confirm this, he did state that there will be a surprise at WrestleMania and gave a particular shout out to the cereal. Also saying, I don't want to give away too much, but it'll be around a match and the sponsorship of that match and what they'll be able to bring to that match, he says. So we're going to do things that fits inside of our storyline as well. Oh yes, because nothing says blood food like a good bowl of cereal. It's worth noting that other sponsors for the event include Pepsi, Take-Two and Snickers, so it's safe to say there are options on the table. We don't get Cinnamon Toast Crunch in the UK, so comment below if it's any good. Many thanks. Finally, moving away from WWE and its silliness now, and AEW may be set for a hugely significant next step for its TV content distribution. According to Bloomberg, an unnamed source who is described as a person familiar with management's thinking has revealed that AEW is considering working with their current TV network, Warner Bros. Discovery, to provide an AEW streaming service in the future. However, no further details on a release timeframe are available at this time. The idea of a streaming service has been battled around within AEW before, with President Tony Khan revealing in an interview with Barstool Sports back in October 2021 that discussions between himself and Warner had taken place regarding the idea. While a streaming service would undoubtedly provide a massive boost to the company, they may not actually need it, if 2022's annual profits for the company are anything to go by. According to Bloomberg, AEW recorded $100 million in revenue in 2022, the first time the company has managed to reach that figure. Tony Khan's purchase of Ring of Honor in March 2022, one that comes packaged with its entire tape 
Escape Library means an AW streaming service would also have that in its locker, something that undoubtedly boosts its appeal and value. Unfortunately, we must end today's video with some sad news, and that is that the genius Lanny Poffo has unfortunately passed away at the age of 68. News of Poffo's death was broken on Thursday afternoon by Hacksaw Jim Duggan via his Instagram page. Poffo, who is the brother of macho man Randy Savage, whom he inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2015, began his wrestling career in the 1970s, appearing for promotions such as the NWA, Mid-South Wrestling, as well as his father Angelo's promotion International Championship Wrestling. The mid-80s would see Lanny compete in the WWF, where he would stay for seven years before moving to WCW in the mid to late 90s. As well as wrestling, Lanny was known for his authorary skills, something he would also incorporate into his wrestling persona. He would go on to publish multiple books, act in numerous movies, as well as start his own podcast, The Genius Cast, with Lanny Poffo, which often had other wrestling legends as guests. We at WrestleTalk would like to offer our sincerest condolences to the Poffo family, as well as those affected by his loss. It felt nice to pick up and play. Also, it feels really smooth. Mm. And I felt that every character has got a nice weight to it. Mm, yes. Particularly when I played as Roman, mm. he sort of stepped through the ring and the character just felt heavier to play. And not yeah. in a bad way, more like a, this feels like if I'm actually playing as Roman Reigns. This is it. And I felt that was slightly different to when I was playing as someone like Kofi or Bron mm. Breaker. 